Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful painting in acrylic. It's going to be like a little barn, kind of a side of the barn with some flowers growing up. A nice little close-up scene. And if you're looking forward to seeing this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with a nice light gray color. See that? A little brown, black, and white. I also have my foundation medium here in a little cup, and that is going to be very useful. I'm going to dip into that quite a bit. I've also went ahead and misted the canvas and as you can see I've done a pencil. There's a lot to cover. <laughs> I've done a pencil sketch and that sort of just helps me figure out exactly where my boards are going. You know you could paint the whole canvas gray and then do your pencil sketch. That would be just fine. Just not the way I decided to do it today. Okay, so I'm going to kind of be slightly careful painting in my boards. I'll show you the picture on the screen. Add a little more color to it, I think. But I love some of these negative space pockets. You know, for instance, you just take a little brown and black. Obviously, other colors too. You can take some blue or whatever and just put in these dark areas. But we'll have all these nice, pretty dark areas that create the contrast here in this painting. All right, that's a pretty good start. Just kind of filling in the lines at this point. Now that we got this background just kind of blocked in the first layers, you still notice the white showing through and some of the brush strokes are really sloppy. And I kind of did that intentionally. Also, I gotta mist my paint real quick while I'm talking so it doesn't dry out. That's a good tip, by the way. I'll save you paint. Anyway, I did that intentionally so that we kind of get these almost impressionistic feeling of brush strokes. <laughs> that was a great way to explain it. <laughs> in the background and then you put your detail over that and I think it'll just be a very nice you know kind of professional looking effect boy that that explanation could have gone a little better <laughs> you know what I mean oh, sometimes it's just easier to look look sometimes it's easier to see it than it is to than it is to explain it that's for sure anyway I'm just gonna kind of randomly smoosh some color up in here. This is mostly just your tans, a little uh, black and a little red and a little mud thrown all together is wonderful. This is to represent dead grass. So I'm going to try to kind of pull my strokes in kind of a dead grass fashion. So here's the thing, uh, we're going to pull our beautiful green out of this. This is, this is springtime and that dead grass is obviously from last winter. And so, we'll kind of get that nice effect. I really like the look of it against that black. Obviously, we're gonna do another coat of black, so this is more or less just gonna get covered up. But this is kind of to establish what I'm doing. More for just me, you know, kind of see how it's gonna look. And I can obviously pull my grass back over. When you do close-up paintings, sometimes there's a little bit of back and forth, you know. It's not, it doesn't just all fall into place the first go around, even though there's not any depth to speak of. You know, we're talking about a painting that has a depth of like four feet, you know? We're not talking about a mountain range that's a hundred miles away. So, it's just you end up kind of bouncing back and forth and covering stuff up a little more than normal, but what are you gonna do? There. That looks, really looks decent. Let me get a little darker here on the edges, and I'll play around with this more as the painting kind of continues. That looks good for now. Kind of looks like grass. Now I'm going to take some red on our number four flat brush and I'm just kind of mixing light colored mud in with it. A yellow ochre light in there would actually be a good thing too. All right, so let me kind of just give you an idea. I've changed photos. I'm using, I'm using a couple. I'm not just sticking to one, but it's all in the same area, just different sections. Um, and this has got a lot of red in it. So, well, not a lot, you know, a little bit of weathered red. And I'm going to just see what I can do about dragging some of this red color. I like it. I think that gives us just a little more character to the painting. And since it's really in that spot, it's very appropriate. And see how you can kind of drag your brush along. At this point, I'm going to get a little more refined. I'm going to try to cover my canvas holes and actually do a, just a better job painting. But there, that looks decent. Not too much of the red, and you definitely don't want red on every board, just on just on some. You'll put the most detail kind of from here to here. Leave these more or less unfinished, really, because you want to bring that detail to the middle and let people sort of ignore the edges. That's one of the tricks for close-up painting. 
Nice. I like that. Okay. Obviously, a lot of this will get covered up, so you put in a little more than you want. That's definitely a little more than I want. A little on that board there, perhaps. Not too much. Good. A little on that one. All right. Now, wipe my, actually, I'm rinse my brush out. It's pretty, pretty easy painting so far. All I've used is this little number four brush. If you haven't tried this brush out, definitely go give it a try. It's natural hair, so when it hits water, it kind of, see that, kind of does funny things. And that's great. It gives you wonderful textures. It's good for leaves. It's good for, like, boards. It's not like the synthetic brushes that hold their edge. This one doesn't hold its edge. And it really gives you an advantage for some things. All right, there's a nice light color. I'm going to try to establish just a little bit of a highlight little foundation medium too that'll help it glide. I'm going to establish just a little bit of a highlight, just one of many, coming down these boards. We've got to do these boards extra nice because they're about the only feature of the painting, that and the flowers, and there's not a whole lot to hide. So you got to get them right. There we go. Maybe a an old knot right there in that board. That's a that's a good spot for one, I think. Nice. And of course, this is acrylic, so that'll dry out a little darker. And then you put another one on this kind of a mid-tone highlight, and then you get a brighter highlight, and you work it up several layers. And by bouncing your hand like this, also, you'll get those old rough sawn wood texture if you're not familiar with it it's kind of just like got these little rings like where you can see where the saw cut really cool love that sort of thing makes for an interesting painting nice all right it's kind of like um i don't know kind of like a natural garden with all these little flowers growing up it's really pretty so pretty. You look around, it's like, oh, I didn't even have to plant that. It just came up. <laughs> it's really nice. That hole is getting too big. Way too big. What am I doing? I'm sitting here talking. I'm not thinking. There. See how you can correct it? That's good. I'm going to dip into the water occasionally also. And you get it to, to run even more so you get different textures. One is a little more dry. The foundation medium is more dry. The water is a little wetter and it gives you a runnier effect. Cool. All right, I'm gonna play around with this for a while. Also working in between my darks as well. Now I've allowed these to dry and I'm coming back with another highlight. This is very important to build up layers. And this highlight's drier, just the paint. No medium, no water, just the paint. I'm mushing my brush in so that helps kind of break it open. Now, one thing I will mention that I started to struggle with, which is, you know, these are not logs. These are boards. They're flat. They're not circles. I paint so many circles in the form of, you know, little logs and, and tree trunks that I start highlighting the right side and kind of shading the left without even thinking about it. So you want to be kind of careful about that. So what I did to fix that was I started highlighting here on the left because the lighting is coming across like this, but I started highlighting on the left and that way I don't have that urge to want to keep the left dark. And then what you can do is you can jump right over here and then highlight the right side of the flat board <laughs> and then you're good to go. You just fill it in. You can have kind of a spot highlight on it, you know, like it's being shaded by stuff, trees or whatever above. But for the most part, we want these fairly uniform. Again, to kind of give them the appearance of being flat. Definitely easier said than done. Kind of, uh, kind of something you just have to think about, you know? I guess that's because we paint a lot of landscapes. And actually, to tell you the truth, as I'm looking at this, it may not hurt to have a couple of more solid areas anyway. Yeah, let me step back. See, that, that looks good. And I can still see all those little nuances that we put underneath. I see the reds. I see some blues coming through. Definitely the grays. And we'll put little edges to the board so you can see the edge. I just haven't done that yet. Nice. 
See that? Just drag it down. I need to keep this nice and dry like I was mentioning because that way it looks a little more scratchy. It gives you that different effect, which I think is nice. Ooh, sometimes you just touch it and it gives us little stipples. I should do that over here. I kind of like that. Going to have to put a lot of different stuff in here. Oh, that's nice. Just gives it a different texture. Now I decided to quit and take a break from doing the highlight to do a little bit of shading just to kind of get an idea of how it's going to look. I still need to highlight the right side. So it also shows you, you can stop what you're doing, go do something else, come back. It's usually okay. I've still got my number four brush. This thing's going a long time today. Just the dark spots and these boards. I like that. Make sure that they, they make sense. You know, you don't want them to just be random necessarily, but you also don't want them to be symmetrical. Okay, that looks decent. Just little touches of sometimes. Sometimes all you need, how about up on this guy? But you know what, he's not really highlighted yet, so I may, maybe we'll wait on him. But a little bit of a, how about a round hole right there? Kinda. Maybe it's a nail or something we can bring out. I don't know, maybe make it smaller. It doesn't matter. At this point, we're still just playing around, trying to get things just the way that we want them. And then we'll refine it toward the end. Okay. This one, maybe according to our reference, this area, I don't have the boards lined up exactly, but this one is fairly clean. Oh, I forgot to mention you can touch them with your finger. Just soften if you want to. Maybe you need to do that to this dark spot. Oh yeah, that looks better. Now it looks more like a broken spot, not like a little round nail or something, because it's too big. Much better. All right. Still got some canvas to fill in there. Wow, I could almost have like a, just like a completely busted out spot. That's not in the photo. Let me put it in and see if I like it. Let me see. It's kind of cool. I'll wait and I'm, I'll make a choice on that. <laughs> Don't be surprised if it's gone. But I want to just sort of sit there with it for a minute and, and look. It is kind of worn out. You know, we got them on the bottom. Wouldn't hurt to have it somewhere up there in the middle. Maybe more of a broken, yeah. Okay, I've played enough around with that. Maybe something else over here. Good. Now we're almost done with the fence. Getting there. Well, at least done for now, you know, to where we'll go on to something else. Thankfully, I'm getting tired of painting this fence. We'll just drop in a little bit of a shadow side like that. What that does is Makes the board look three-dimensional. Just see that edge like that. Very good. Wouldn't hurt to, let me just grab a, let me grab a synthetic brush. Wouldn't hurt to pop out the edges. Here's my palette. So you know you got your, you got your color there, your dark color, and you pop the edges with a little light sharp right up against it so that you can really tell, especially on this one, you kind of lose it against some of those reds that I put in. And what this does will help to bring it back. Oh yeah. Now you can see the edge of the board a little better. Plus it's good to have another brush stroke or two in there. You know, a different brush stroke, not just all the same. This gives you a smoother look. Not a bad thing. No, that's not bad at all. I kind of like that warm board. I don't know if we'll keep it or if we'll paint over it or what, but it kind of turned out nice, didn't it? Oh yeah, there. Okay, so I'll keep that brush handy and just continue with this one. Good, all the way down. Reload the, the light one. And then carve out the edge of the board. It sure is nice that this is a rough barn and not too new. <laughs> that way we don't have to get it perfect. We can really spice this area up with just a few little cracks. I know I was close to done, but I decided I gotta get some cracks in here with this number six synthetic flat brush. Very important because we'll get some wonderful sharp edges that will go great against our soft edges. You can kind of get a little faster, honestly. Kind of just run them right down. Almost just fall out of the brush. <laughs> All right. See that? Just get some beautiful little broken places in there. Little little areas where, you know, it's kind of deep. All right. This is a knot there, maybe. 
can make some really good knots just by kind of scumbling with the brush or cracks or whatever they are. Doesn't really matter. Nice. Keep it fairly thin though. That way you'll get nice skinny lines. One really, really cool trick you can do here is once everything's good and dry, just take a wash, a purple wash really. I did gray it down a little bit. I'm making um, shadows of trees. See that? It looks like trees are above and, or a bush or something. Doesn't have to be trees, just a little bush. Just casting a little touch of a shadow on the building. This is not at all in the photo that I'm copying, but that's why I'm not really copying a photo today. I'm just using it for inspiration, honestly. But don't overdo, look how cool that is. I'm kind of standing way back, making sure it's working. Just a little paint, mostly water. Mostly water. And just kind of get some of that action going. I'm going right over my darks. You may have to put your darks back in. That's not really a, not really a big deal. Okay. There, that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Pretty nice. <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and brighten this foreground up with a lot of what feels like, you know, last year's grass. That's what we want this to feel like right in here. And we've done this before. I can't remember what, but it feels familiar to me. <laughs> I think we were painting pumpkins last time I did this or something like that. But anyway, I don't know how I'm even, <laughs> even remembering that. I've done so many different paintings, but there we go. I'm just going to try to create as much of a random effect of, of dried up grass and stuff here on the ground as possible. Of course, now that these fence posts are done, or close to done, we can bring a couple of these blades of grass right over. It'd be very interesting. All right, of course, you don't want just one dead color, so I'll change out our colors quite a bit as we go. Add a little more of our umber. That's actually very pretty to do that. Just add a little umber, especially as you go out to the right and left side. I also put a little yellow in there a little while ago. I don't know why. I just did. <laughs> then it actually looks like it's coming through and I enjoy that. That's cool. All right, so we'll play around with the grass here for just a little while and then we'll put the beautiful flowers on top. Now I'm going to mix up a nice green color. Actually, I've got just about <laughs> everything in that green, even some red, which will help make it brownish to tie in with the painting. You can also see here that I just quickly put that board. I had a board in there and I put it back in. I ended up covering it up and there it is. Okay. <laughs> now let's go ahead and kind of figure out exactly where we want our little, our little flowers. So there's about dead center. And I'm going to go left of center just to start, go to the right as well, but I don't want to put anything big right on center. You wouldn't, wouldn't want to draw a line straight up if you know what I mean. Well, that's a pretty color. Wow. Sometimes you throw everything in the pile and something good comes out. <laughs> All right. Now here toward the bottom, we'll just do a few. These are kind of random leaves. I need to get my brush just a little bit wetter. These are kind of some random leaves. You know, we could make them perfect, but Honestly, I kind of just like the idea of these are just wildflowers, so these are kind of just wild leaves. How's that? Don't get them symmetrical. And we'll definitely have to come back and highlight for sure. Oh, that looks good, but just kind of touch on a couple. Anywhere you go crazy, you can just bring a stem to that area. You know, you can get up here, watch this. Get up here and just go like this, woo, with a bunch of leaves. And then you can just connect them with a stem. You have multiple options. It's all good. Now, you, of course, we got to do some lower ones, and for that, I'm just changing my color a little. We got to do some lower ones on the ground. Good. See that? It's nice to have multiple shades of color happening. That doesn't hurt anything. A couple of scratchy ones are okay, but we don't want we don't want too many scratchy ones. Good enough. Much smaller as you get up there. And don't fill in all of your landscape, but definitely putting in quite a few. These are more or less the feature of the painting. Now we're going to go ahead and work on our flowers up here. I think the most important thing is that we get this nice light color that's not pure white. We're painting, <laughs> we're painting with acrylics here. 
So if you go, in fact, I've got to put a little of our foundation medium in, but if you go with pure white, it's going to show. You've got to tint your white a little bit. I like yellow ochre light for this, but you can use, honestly, red or cad yellow if you want. Cool. I'm just kind of hitting a couple of these. After they dry, they sort of lose their their brilliance. And you got to come back and you got to pop the color again. Notice how there's no symmetrical patterns going on here. That's so important. There. Oh, these little wildflowers are pretty, aren't they? All right, now maybe right, right here we could do one. You don't want them all facing the same way, of course. And you don't necessarily want them all the same size, although they're similar sizes. You know, you don't want one like this and like that, you know what I mean? Very similar. I don't think you can paint them all the same size. It's just more or less the getting them spaced in a way that looks good. That's going to be your bigger, bigger thing to watch for. And the other thing is, you know, they're fairly separated, but we definitely need quite a few that are also touching, like this. The ones that are touching, you can actually do them a little faster. So it's just like an evergreen tree, they kind of, you know, they hide together. You only have to worry about the, the top of the tree. Same, same with the flower. You'd be surprised sometimes if you just kind of almost close your eyes and throw them in fast, sometimes they come out better. It's really funny, but hey. All right, not bad. We'll just keep working on this for a few more minutes. We'll put some other color ones in too. All right, let's go ahead and add just a few little leaves. You can see I just got done popping a couple of yellow wildflowers in. That's good. And now we're just going to see about highlighting. Oh, it's kind of a dry looking highlight. What's up with that? <laughs> Here's my color right there. That's not gonna do. Let's get that a little wetter. All right, so I got foundation medium going here. I'm trying just to, yeah, see how that makes it flow a little better? Oh yeah, see the tiny leaves are kind of nice. You can just add them with highlight, honestly. Boop. <laughs> All right. This is a large brush, really. We should be using the micro filbert, which is what I use on the flowers, of course. Nice, but I don't know, it's sort of kind of working. Now these, the yellow, I think those are dandelions, right? Pretty sure they are. Those we can cover up with some more dark. Mm, nice, look at that. Just do a couple of hits of, of this light here and there, and then we'll put our darks back in, and then add our lights, and then our darks, and eventually it'll look decent kind of how you have to play around with this sort of stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and add a little final highlight to our yellow dandelions here. That looks decent. Honestly, you don't need that much. It's not important. If people are looking at those flowers first, we probably did something wrong. <laughs> All right. There. Just, just enough. The light is coming across this way today. Maybe just a couple kind of hanging down, I don't know, just interesting. Change it up a little. And on this one. Isn't it amazing how stuff shrinks back, you know? You make it big, it shrinks back just in general when you're painting. You just end up covering the edges, you know? So you kind of bring them back out to make them a little more interesting. I mean, we don't want them too tiny to where they look like little just yellow dots. You want them to have a little, a little impact on the painting. That looks nice. So you see we've got one that kind of faces out, one that's facing up, and then just one by itself over here. Get a little more color on the edge there, and then let me highlight the right side a little stronger. Here's my, here's my paint. Just a nice light. It was a little too much in there, but just a nice light yellow. Oops. Oh, there you go. Just touch a little. Ooh, that bright, that, that white makes it look so bright. That's a little white right on the petals. That's really interesting, isn't it? It's so excited I can't talk here. <laughs> All right, it's, this is a fun painting. This is a different painting and I enjoy, enjoy working on it. Yeah, it's really cool. I've really enjoyed it so far. It's not done yet, but we're getting there, definitely. 
you guys haven't checked out the acrylics, definitely go to the website and give them a try. They are, in my opinion, <laughs> they're really fun. They're really nice to work with, easy to work with. And if you're just starting out, these are easy to set up and deal with, you know? Super, super simple. Just water cleanup, no big deal. I like that, I like that highlight. I might throw that on, on this one over here as well. Just, just a touch more. Of course, the acrylics dry about two shades, I would say about two shades darker. So you build up your highlights, and that's actually a good thing in some ways because it forces you to put all these beautiful tones in there. You would otherwise stop with just one or two. It makes you have to put four or five. That's actually a really good thing. All right, now let's go ahead and get those yellow centers to these flowers up here. I go a little yellow and red. Well, my paint's dried. See that? So I may need to squirt out a little more. It's starting to dry up, but well, that's not quite yellow enough. There we go. All right, and then these, make sure, okay. These are quite large, these little yellow centers. There we go, that looks good. And of course, we'll highlight the centers as well. It's important not to get them all going that same direction. They do not all need one, that's for sure. Just enough to show that, that a nice detail, you know, has been added. That's about it. Maybe that one's facing behind, I don't know. You know, you just don't need them in all of them. Cool. So to give that effect that this one is behind, <laughs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> all you've got to do is sort of add that little base. Look at that, isn't that cool? Oh, I like that. That was worth it. I love showing you stuff like that. Now I've got the liner brush and some thin paint. That's not quite thin enough, but otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. There we go. All right. And we're going to go ahead and add on some extra details here in the boards. Now that we know kind of where these flowers are, it's, it's a little easier to pick out where the details should be and where it shouldn't be. And maybe where it shouldn't be is more important because you know, you don't want to overemphasize, you know, that spot right there. You know what I mean? We're gonna to try to keep our composition good. Now, let me kind of show you the composition if I can chat and paint here. We've kind of got this board here, I like that, and I like how this goes up and then kind of comes back down and it kicks back up just a little. It's very dark on that corner. And that helps the composition. It helps to kind of keep you in the middle. That's the idea of all that. So it's not so willy-nilly. There we go. <laughs> That's something you can't do in oil, right? Rub it with your finger if you need to soften it. That is one big advantage of acrylics is the, the smudge with the finger technique. Cool. And just a few little lines right in here to indicate that detail. Plus, I'll probably do a couple of nails or something like that. Nothing crazy, just enough. Just enough to show that we, we got a little, <laughs> a little something going on here. I like it, I like it. Look how that just sharpens it up a little, doesn't it? This liner brush, a little more paint. This liner brush is pretty effective for this sort of stuff. It gets you a nice detail. You can also use other brushes, you know, like the, um, the microfilbert would be good for this. I just got the liner brush out and I thought it'd be fun to use it. Right, need to go a little brighter. That's what I think I'm lacking, a little brighter. Oh, there it is. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.